Hey everyone, in this video I want to talk about the new attribute based access control now available for Blob. And it's really a completely new way we can think about of controlling access to the Blobs in our storage accounts. Now as always, if this is useful, a like, subscribe, comment and share is appreciated and hit that bell icon to be notified when I release new content. Now I can always think about there's kind of two planes for pretty much all resources in Azure. Now if I take for example a storage account. So when I interact with a storage account I really can think about well there's kind of this control plane. So the control plane you can think of kind of the Azure resource manager that's interactions through the ARM RESTful API, maybe like creating a storage account, modifying a storage account, setting tags on the storage account resource. Then I can think about there's the data plane. So the data plane is resource specific. I'm actually dealing with creating blobs, reading a blob, those types of actions. Now when I interact in the olden days, originally, there are access keys that I can get from the control plane. So if I am some kind of system over here and I wanted to talk to the blobs, I could go to the control plane, get the access keys, and then with the access key, I can authenticate to the data plane to get the content. I could also get a shared access signature, which is a more granular set of access that's signed with those access keys of the storage account. That's very generic, it's very overpowered. And actually one of the things we can now do is actually disable the use of those kind of access keys. If I just go and jump over to a storage account, for example, and if I just go and look at this storage account, and I can actually go and look at my configuration of the storage account. So over here, let's scroll down, go to my configuration. One of the options we actually have now is this allow storage account key access and I could set it to disabled. Now if I set it to disabled that also means things like shared access signatures which are signed with those keys won't work either. Remember we can always get to those all powerful um, keys if we go and look at our storage account and we have this under security and networking the access keys and there are two of those. So the goal is ideally we want to move away from that. And the move away from that has actually been integrating with Azure AD and role-based access control. So I can now think about, well, we have kind of the Azure Active Directory. And in that Azure Active Directory, we have service principles. They could be users, they could be managed identities, could be service principles for applications. There's an actual identity. So we have some kind of service principle within the Azure AD, and then we have roles. So we can actually define these roles, and a role is really a set of actions that I'm allowed to do. Now with the introduction of role-based access control for storage, we now have actions for both the control plane and the data plane. So we once again jump over to our storage account, if I actually go to something like the access control and I look at the roles that are available, we see the regular owner contributor reader. These are Azure resource manager level, the control plane, nothing to do with the data plane. But if we actually go and look, we see there's like a storage blob data owner, storage blob data reader, storage blob delegator. So we have these kind of special roles. And if we go and look at one of these, so if we actually view the data owner, we can see there are regular actions. So these are all the control plane. But we can also see data actions. So this is now operating at the data plane, and I can read blob, write blob, delete blob, add blob content, uh, blob tags. Now these are the blob index tags we kind of have here at the bottom. That's a special type of metadata. That's not the regular ARM tags. That's a blob index tag. So now we actually have these abilities to have RBAC. And just like regular RBAC, yes, I have a storage account, so I could take a principle and a role and assign it at a scope. 
Now the scope could absolutely be, hey, the scope is the storage account. But that storage account obviously lives inside a resource group. So I could have R back here as well. So then it would get inherited. So I could have R back at the storage account level. The resource group lives in a subscription. Well, I could have R back here as well. And even within that storage account, I actually have containers. And yep, I can do R back at those levels. So I can assign an identity, a role at the data plane at a container level, at a storage account level, at a resource sub, and it gets inherited down. So that's pretty good granularity I can do there. But with this new attribute-based access control, I can actually go even more granular. Now I mentioned within these containers, we kind of have various blobs kind of sitting in here. And there is certain metadata now about those blobs. One of them is kind of these index tags. So these are key value pairs. If we jump back to our storage account for a second, and let's just go and look in a container, we'll look in images. And I'm going to look at this. These are my dogs eating cereal. Not super exciting. But if I go and look at the properties, one of the things you can actually see is I'm not looking at metadata. I'm looking at blob index tags. And you can see here I've added one. It's called project and I gave it a value of JL. So that's a property I can set. I can set that when I upload. I could add additional ones afterwards as well. So we now have this metadata that I can set. And obviously this blob itself has its own properties. It's in a certain container. It has a certain name. So there are attributes of the blob, its path, container, the index tags. And as you may kind of guess what's happening is the attribute based access control is now going to let us use those. So those various attributes both of kind of the resource but also of my request. So the thing I'm actually attempting to do on that data plane. And I can now add this attribute based access control as part of the assignment. So we always think about, hey, we take a principle, we combine that with a role, and we assign it at a scope. What I'm now adding to that is also conditions, i.e. the attribute based access control. So it's the identity and a role at a scope, but I'm now adding conditions to that. And as part of those conditions, I can say, hey, am I looking to think about the resource? Or am I looking at saying about the request to what I'm actually performing? And then only if the condition is met, do I actually get the role that has those actions defined that I could normally do. This is best understood with an example. So let's take it super simple. Let's imagine I have a user, say Clark. Clark is a member of a group, Justice League. And that group is going to be given the role as blob data reader. But I'm going to set a condition to say I only have that role if there's a tag on the blob of project JL. So I can read blobs with JL, I won't be able to read other blobs, even though that assignment is at the scope kind of of the storage account. So let's kind of see that in action. So can we jump over? So here I'm going to jump up to the storage account. If I look at my access control, I look at my role assignments, what we'll actually see is I have blob data reader, and here you can see I have an entry for Justice League. And you'll see there's this view edit. And notice it is for blob data reader. Now you'll see Clark Ken also has another rule up here. It doesn't apply um, to this generic kind of storage account access. I'll just quickly show so you understand why not. This has a condition that it only applies to blobs in a certain container name and a certain virtual folder. So it has to be, hey, in the testing virtual directory, which our test is not going to be. So this would not apply. So Clark is not getting blob data reader from this. I'm going to show this as a second demo. 
So what we are using is this one. So this would apply, Clark is in Justice League, and this is about blob read, but this time it's an attribute of the resource. I'm looking at the blob index tags, I'm looking at the project key, and this is case sensitive. The value, I'm ignoring the case, it has to be JL. So this is how this would actually take effect, how you're giving this particular role, but these conditions have to be true. Now, if I was just creating this, I could do add role assignment preview. I would select, for example, if I'm just doing read, I could select the blob data reader. I would add to whatever group I want to give it to. And then I can set the condition. So I could add a condition. And hey, what action am I trying to do? Hey, I'm just trying to read a blob actually with tag conditions. You can see here blobs read with tag conditions. Then I could add the expression. So the source is going to be on the resource, it's on the blob, it's not part of my request. I'm going to look at the values in a key. What is the key? So it's kind of project. And I'm going to say, hey, the string equals ignore case. And I could say JL. So that's all I have to do to create that. I would hit save and then. I would actually go and create it. And you can actually see I can create the conditions either in kind of a nice GUI editor or I can do it directly in code. So that's all I did. So let's jump over to Clark. So I'm Clark. I'm going to look at the containers. I can see images and I can see all of the different images. Now if I click on this one, remember this has the project set to JL. Well, okay, I, I can see see the metadata, which means I have access on the data plane, and I could download it, and sure enough, there are my dogs eating cereal. So that worked. Now, the other two blobs do not have that blob index metadata set. If I jump over to my other account and look at the properties on one of them, for example, you see there's no blob index tags. So Clark should not have access. Now, if I go back as Clark and try and click on a different one, no access. Because the condition is not met. The blob does not have that project blob index tag set to JL. So I don't have access. So even though the assignment was at the storage account, hey, the project has to match actually what that condition was. Now, remember, I can set these at container levels as well. So I've got a different container over here, images right. And what I'm actually doing here is if I jump back over to my other account again, if I go to images right, what I did is I did another role assignment. Once again, I did it for the Justice League, but this time it's storage blob data owner. Now it has to be blob data owner, not contributor, because we're actually going to require a blob index tag to be created. And only owners can actually create blob index tags. Contributors cannot. So contributor will not work. It has to be owner. And all I've done on this rule is I've just basically said, hey, for a blob write or blob action add, the request, so that's me performing an action against the storage account. I'm looking for blob index tags. And I have to set a blob index tag of project equal to JL to be able to create a blob in that storage account, in this particular container, the image right container. So now if I go back over to Clark, if I try and do an upload, and I'm really just going to select any file I can find here. Let's see if I have anything that I can use. There we go. This, this key would work. So I'm going to pick that. And I'm going to upload. Well, it fails. I didn't set the key. I'm requiring that to be set. If I select this again, but under advanced, this time for my blob index tag, I'll set project to JL and do upload. Well, now it worked because I'm meeting the condition that gives me the role that lets me create the blob and set those index tags. So that's kind of the key point 
of these attribute-based access controls. I only get the role if the conditions are met. And then really just to kind of finish off the demo, I did say there was kind of that third rule. So that's back again at the storage account level. I also did give Clark directly the blob data reader role, but again, I put conditions on it. And this time I'm using, again, it's an attribute of the resource. And I'm basically looking for the container name has to be images and the path of the blob has to include testing slash, so a virtual directory. Again, blobs don't actually have true folders, but I can do virtual directories. It's just made part of the name of the blob. So the blob path has to include testing slash and then something. So now, if I go back to being Clark, and once again, remember, in images, I couldn't access this because it didn't have the tag. And it's not in the testing virtual folder. But if I go to testing, and just to try to prove a point, if we go and look at that image in testing, it does not have metadata. So it doesn't have the tag that the other rule would have given it access to. So notice there's no blob index tag. So this time to get blob reader, it's going to have to match that condition of, hey, it's in the images container and the path includes testing slash, which this does. So technically, well, I can get to the metadata and I can get to the blob. So there's a whole set of different ways I can actually use this, but think about it now. I'm not restricted only to the granularity and having to maybe even create rules at, at every maybe container level. Now I could create rules at kind of the storage account or the resource group or the subscription and base it on those blob index tags to be able to read them. The only caveat I would say is potential readability. Because if I just set it all at the subscription level or resource group or even storage account, and I'm using things like the blob index tag rule, and I'm using things maybe like the path, if I just go and look at Clark, what rights I have, I will see blob data reader. It doesn't show me those conditions in there or try and evaluate it when I say, what are my effective rights? So that, that may get a little bit confusing. So naming um, things is, is important here, but just bear that in mind when you're leveraging that. If I try and say, hey, what are my permissions as Clark? If I just jump over, for example, to the storage account, and I just look at access control, and I see what is my access, it's just going to show me storage blob data reader. It is not going to show me anything about, well, there is a specific condition on this, so only if blob index tag or only if in this folder. So if people weren't aware of that and they were trying to look at their permissions or a service principles permissions, they'd be like, well, I should have access. Why is this not working? They'd actually have to go and dig into the specifics of those conditions to work out, oh, okay, it's missing the blob index tag. So. That's the feature. I mean, it's phenomenally powerful. This really is, I think, I think a game changer. It's in preview right now. So again, I think we're going to see functionality added and this is going to grow. But the documentation is great. It has actual code. You can copy and paste into the, the code view. I just showed a couple of those things. But this ability now to add conditions for the role to actually be assigned at whatever scope, uh, I think is super. I hope that helps uh, explain what this is. And uh, good luck.